Hello and welcome to the console training definitive guide for MA2 for MIDI. My name is Alex Hughes and today we are doing part 2 of our 3 part series on getting MIDI devices working with Grand MA2. Today the system we are using is a Grand MA on PC system running 3.3.4, an Akai Mini APC and a software program called Bone MIDI Translator Pro. Let's begin. So unlike the MIDI Translator Classic software, it's already got a virtual MIDI uh, bridge inbuilt or a virtual MIDI device inbuilt. So we don't need to worry about installing any other software. All we need to do is find our input, in this case the APC Mini, and we need to just set it to output via our virtual output like that. We can also set it so that our virtual input goes to our APC Mini if we want to send information back, for example, if we want to send notes back to turn LEDs on or something. So let's do it like that. We'll also see that there are some errors below which say that it might already be open. We should be fine. It'll be something to do with the fact that I've just recorded the, the uh, classic video. So once again, we can just click on the little plus to create a new translator. And on this time, we've got a nice little window over here. So I can just once again, click Capture MIDI, do what I need to do. And here we can see we're getting a control change on channel one, on control change 48. So all I have to do is set my incoming to be control change. Channel one is fine. Make sure that it matches up. So we're gonna set it to 48. We're gonna then set the value to be a variable. Because if we leave it at value, all it's going to do is the moment it receives something on this value, it's going to trigger an output. We want the value to actually vary. So we want the control changes value to actually be translated into a note. So we're going to set the value, the variable to be 00. And then on outgoing, we want a MIDI message. We want it on channel 1 or we can put it on channel 2 so it's separated from all the other stuff and we're going to set it to what we had it on in the classic which was 99 and here we can see it's a D flat or sharp that's a sharp 7 and we're going to also set the velocity to be 00 now if we push the fader up we can see that we get MIDI in and MIDI out at the bottom of the screen here let's do it for fader 2 as well what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate it. We're also going to give it a name just so we can track things. So we're going to call this one Fader 2. And we're going to call the other one Fader 1. And then we're going to come to Fader 2. We're going to once again move our object, seeing that it's now Control Change 49. So all we have to do is go Control Change 49. And of course, there's a nice little guide for this device and most other devices that'll tell you what channels and what notes or values that they'll output when they uh, when they output things. The Akai Professional APC one's got a really good one. MIDI fighters can be changed. Korg nano controllers and stuff like that have got their own utilities and you can change them in there. But for uh, some bits of software like this, they're fixed. I kind of prefer them fixed, but anyway, let's continue. By fix, you know, we always know what we're dealing with. So we'll set our variable to be PP and we'll make sure that our variable at the other end is also PP and that we're sending note 100. Now I explained in the last video, the reason we're setting our notes this high is because zero through 98 are being used as notes for all the buttons that are on this APC device. So now we've got it set, we can jump into MA and we can see what it looks like. So now we've come into MA, all we have to do is click on the little yellow circle first, go Options, make sure that our input device is now Bone MIDI Translator 1, because we've set it as a virtual port, and we're also going to set the MIDI Translator as the output, so that if we need to send information back to a variable amount of devices, we can definitely do that. So the reason we'd send information back is if for example, this APC has got lots of little lights that we can turn on by sending notes back, which will be explained in video 3. But the other reason that we also send it back to MIDI translator as opposed to the directly to the device is, if we have more than one device, we can do all the routing via MIDI translator pro. So we'll leave it for MIDI translator pro. And now let's go into setup, remote setups, MIDI. 
And if we move our first fader, we can see that we get fader movement. And we're also getting note 99 and a velocity of 81. The velocity is what a fader is essentially defined as in terms of the variable amount. By default, buttons only send 0 velocity and 127, which would indicate on. Some pressure sensitive ones can send other values, but most of the time, buttons will only send an on or off. So now we just need to map this information. So if we click add, we're going to call this fader 1 so we know what we're dealing with. We know that it's coming in on note 99. We're going to set it to channel 1 because we know that it's coming in on channel 1. And we want it to be an executor and we want it to be on page number 1. You could set it to page number 2 or you could leave on current page of master which means whatever page you've got selected on your MA currently on your uh, on your faders is the one that it'll use. So you can use them on multiple uh, things if you want but most of the time I prefer to fix them so I know exactly what they're doing. We want it to be executive 1, we want it to be fader and we're going to duplicate that for fader 2. And we know that it's channel 1, we know that it's going to be an executor, we know that they're both going to be page 1. But what we can do here is if we've got a multiple of them, what we can do is we can go 1 through 2 and it will automatically populate them all in an order like that. We're also making sure that it's fader. And we know that the, the note's going to be 100, but we're going to check anyway. So we're going to push our fader up and see that it's note 100. So we're going to go note 100. I'll also show you what it looks like if we're not translating data. So if I push up fader 3, which we haven't mapped in the Translator Pro, what we get is just a bunch of control changes. The MA doesn't understand them and doesn't want to deal with them. Now we've got our MIDI set up, we can go and look and see whether our executors are working. So we'll try our first fader, fader 1 works, and fader 2 works. And if we decided that we also wanted to have some buttons working, we could go back into remote setup and we could do the same procedure. Now either I can look at the nice little chart that's supplied with the device and I can tell you that the first button is uh, note 56 or I can just press it and we can see that it comes up as note 56. So we're going to map it, we're going to call it exec1 button1 one, and I'll explain where button 1, 2 and 3 are in a second. We know that it's note 56, we know that it's coming in on channel 1, we know that it's an exec, we know that it's page 1, and we know that it's button 1. We've got the option of button 2, 3 and 1 and fader, we want button number 1, and now when we come out, we can see that I've already set this up as a flash button, but if I go in, this is button number one, this is button number two, and this is button number three. But if I now go back in here and press my first button, what we should have is a flash. And here we can see we've got it flashing. That's the definitive guide for MIDI Translator Pro. In the next video, we'll cover GMA tools as well as sending some information back to our controller and seeing some little lights turn on in various different ways. Anyway, my name is Alex Hughes. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to drop by our Facebook page or send us an email. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash console training. And we'd love to have your questions, comments, and feel free to share these videos. We really appreciate it. If you feel like donating to the cause, we of course have our Patreon, where you get videos a week early. Thanks for watching.